God bless you on this blessed Wednesday evening Bible study of the Right Way Church, 4300 Ramona Avenue, Dallas, Texas, 75216. We greet you in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We love you. We thank God for you joining in with us this past Sunday uh, by way of the Right Way Church, 1045 a.m. service. Uh, God blessed in a mighty way. Uh, we've been getting good uh, response from Sunday's service and Sunday's message. So to God be the glory. That message was entitled, Take Jesus With You. And we want to be reminded of that, that we, we don't ever want to uh, not have Jesus with us. Uh, wherever we go, whenever we go, we've got to have the Lord with us because we know that no hurt, harm, or danger can come to us when the Lord, when we're in the presence of the Lord. And so we thank you for joining in with us. We want to thank everyone that came by for drive up prayer and giving. Uh, we had a blessed time. We continue to do that. I want to encourage you all. There's so many of you all that have not come by for drive up prayer and giving. And of course, we're always praying for you. Uh, and many do give online, but there's a lot that are not giving online, and I don't see you for drive up prayer and giving, and I don't see anything coming by way of mail. So please mail tithes and uh, offerings to 4300 Ramona Avenue, Dallas, Texas, 75216. Uh, that is a secured uh uh, mailbox that's locked, and uh, it is also uh, observed uh, for safety as well. So you can rest assured it'll be fine if you just mail it to the church. But the quickest and easiest way, in my opinion, is to give online www.rightwaydallas.com and just give online. God bless you. It comes in. Uh, and we will re it gets recorded and you'll get uh, your tax return receipt, amen, at the end of the year uh, to help you with your taxes this upcoming year. God is blessing in spite of it all. God is blessing. You st we're still living, breathing. We're still operating. And, and, and you are still uh, being blessed by the Lord. So it is important that we be obedient to God's word and give. Amen. Bring the tithe into the storehouse so that there will be food in my house. That's Malachi 3. Jesus said, God says, test me now in this and see why I want to open up the windows of heaven. Pour you out a blessing. You want to have room enough to receive. It'll overflow. And so I dare you to trust God and be consistent and uh, legitimate givers. In other words, a tenth. Your tithe is a tenth. Amen. At the end of every year, you ought to be able to look at uh, your yearly income for that year and rest assured that you gave at least a tenth of what your yearly income was. If we're not doing that, the Bible says we're robbing God. Will a man rob God? We'll do it in tithes and offerings. So uh, let us be faithful in our giving. We are doing great things at the right way church when god blesses us to come back you're gonna see some upgrades amen but we cannot do that without you being a blessing being faithful in your giving and god is gonna honor it and bless you so remember www.rightwaydallas.com or you can mail it 4300 Ramona Avenue, Dallas, Texas, 75216. Checks payable to the Right Way Church. Amen. Money order, whatever you're going to do, cashier's check, the Right Way Church. Uh, and then certainly we would love to have you give in person for drive up, prayer, and giving. We keep a safe social distance, wear mouth coverings, and we ask that you do the same. Keep our distance. Uh, we pray for you, give you the opportunity to give as well. 
And so those are three wonderful ways, three excellent ways for you to give, be a blessing to the ministry, and help us continue uh, to uh, be great stewards over what God has blessed us with at the Right Way Church. And I'm telling you, if you give, you're going to be certainly uh, impressed with what God is doing in the life of the Right Way Church. So God bless you. We're praying for everyone. I was delighted to hear uh, from Sister uh, Yolanda. Amen. Uh, reached out to me. Yolanda Smith uh, reached out to me, said her and her family and her mother, they miss being at church. They love us. We love you you all, and we miss you all as well. Everyone, I, I, I just feel uh, in my spirit that it won't be that much longer. We're on the down. In other words, we're closer to it than from it. Amen. And so we look forward when the time comes. We're going to try to give you a heads up uh, so that you can be prepared and everyone can come and fellowship at the Right Way Church. But in the meantime, let's continue to be in prayer as the COVID-19 numbers and cases and sicknesses and deaths continue to rise. And so we are grateful to God. I, One of my friend and pastor uh, buddies uh, notified me today he has. COVID-19. So we want to be in prayer for everyone, but certainly all of our pastors and preachers and leaders. Amen. Please be in prayer. Uh, but we are certainly trusting in the Lord and know that he can certainly handle it. And so on tonight, I'm not going to uh, be before you long at all. We actually are going to go back into uh, the series, the book of Hosea. I think this will be the third uh, part of Hosea, and ironically, we'll be covering the third chapter of Hosea on tonight. Uh, and so with that in mind, uh, Hosea chapter 3, if you will go there, it only has five verses, amen, five verses in the book of Hosea, chapter, the third chapter of the book of Hosea, uh, the prophet Hosea, and I'll give you a refresher quick bring you up to uh, back up to pace and then uh, we'll cover this third chapter and you can enjoy the rest of this blessed evening but we want to see you on Sunday 10 45 a.m. Facebook live but certainly on the right way website we got it all going there thanks be to God and to sister Natasha for heading up our website and social media ministry uh, you can listen to it or you can listen and watch live on that website, but you can also go back and pull it up uh, if you missed it. Amen. So if you didn't catch Sunday's message, I encourage you to go back and get it. Amen. We did some old school singing. No music. It was all good. Amen. We pray for our music staff. We're looking forward to seeing all of y'all. Amen. When God says so. Amen. We love you. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father, we come now thanking you for this opportunity for this blessed Wednesday evening. Lord, we are at the midway point of this month of July. Lord, we thank you for keeping us and protecting us. Lord, we thank you for what you're doing in the life of the Right Way Church. Lord, we pray for all those that stand in need, those that are sick in the hospital, recuperating, whatever it may be, Lord. We pray right now that your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Lord, we want to be pleasing in your sight. Be with us now as we go into this Bible study. Give us what we need, Lord. Speak to us. In Jesus' name we pray and we ask it all. Amen. Amen. Chapter 3 of Hosea. Amen. The prophet Hosea, minor prophet, uh, simply because his writing uh, of the book of Hosea was not as long as some of the other writings of the prophets, so the, the, the number of pages simply could, makes him considered a minor prophet, but certainly there's a great word in the prophecy of Hosea, and so we ask that you turn your phone off or on silent or vibrate, amen, we're happy to have you, and as I said, we're not going to be long, uh, we'll be done certainly prayerfully by 8.30, and that gives us uh, just a little bit under 20 minutes to cover this 
But we got five verses here, amen, and it says Hosea symbolic, excuse me, Hosea second symbolic marriage. That's the third chapter of Hosea. Now, before we get into that, I want to remind you that Hosea, prophet of God, God told him to marry a harlot. He marries a harlot. He has children with her. And she leaves him and goes off and does unfaithful things. She's not loyal to Hosea, the man of God, the prophet of God. And this is indicative of how God wanted Hosea to walk in his shoes, uh, to feel what he feels. And I thought about that, uh, that how would we, I, I, have you ever wondered how God feels uh, with the way we, uh, as his children, can be so inconsistent and uh, can be, uh, can lack dependability and structure and faithfulness and all of the things that we bring, the issues that we bring to the table. We're going to get into that kind of stuff, but, but, but it is something to walk in the Father's shoes. That would be God, the Father's shoes to, to be a blessing and, and heal and deliver and set free and just be nothing but good to, and to people and to humanity and to all of creation. God is nothing but good to us, yet we turn around. How would we feel to turn around in those very things that we have blessed, that we have uh, uh, been so faithful to, treats us like, like we haven't done anything. And so I dare us tonight to govern ourselves according to the fact that if we uh, were able to see things from God's viewpoint or the lens of of God, that 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 I believe that that would uh, that would change some of us and some of our uh, actions and some of our uh, decisions if we could really empathize and uh, feel what God feels. Amen. And so let us get to this third chapter. The third chapter, verses 1 through 5, let me read that. Because since then, it began with Hosea marrying the harlot, Gomer, having children. She leaves, leaves him with the children. She goes off, cheats, and is unfaithful, and all of that stuff. And then now God is telling Hosea again to go back and get the unfaithful wife. That's what chapter 3 is dealing with. Let's read it. Verses 1 through 5. Follow me, y'all. Follow me. Follow me. Then the Lord said to me, go again. See, I said he went a it was second time. Go again. Love a woman who is loved by her husband. Hosea was her husband, and he loved her. Amen. Yeah, in spite of his love, the Bible says, uh, and this is Hosea writing, he says, Then the Lord, in verse 1, said to me, Go again, love a woman who is loved by her husband, yet an adulteress. That means a woman that's married but deals with other men in spite of the marriage. Even as the Lord loves the sons of Israel, though they turn to other gods and love Raisin cakes. Now, let's deal with that. That's verse 1. Then the Lord said, he told uh, Hosea to go back again and get his wife. And that she's already been adulterous. In other words, we're going to find out that she's actually, uh, when he goes back to get her, she is living with another man. Amen. Help me, Lord Jesus. This, 
This some stuff sound like reality TV and stuff today. Amen. That's why the Bible is always relevant. Amen. It does not get outdated. It is always relevant, and we thank God for it. And so who uh, 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 Hosea said, Lord, told me again, go love a woman who is loved by her husband, yet an adulteress, even as the Lord loves the sons of Israel, though they turn to other gods and love raisin cakes. So the what this text does is it reminds us that yes, uh, Gomer has been unfaithful. She's been an adulterer uh, toward her husband, the prophet Hosea, but also God is using this to help Israel, the people, so-called people of God, to understand that they've been unfaithful as well. And when we, if we would really be honest tonight, we, we would, we, we are guilty of that. Uh, as well, that we have had times where we're unfaithful to God. We don't, we don't stick to it. We, 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 he blesses us, and sometimes, I don't want to jump the gun, but watch this, sometimes uh, we will pray to God because we're in a rough spot and, and, and our backs are against the wall, and we'll pray to God and tell the Lord in that prayer that, Lord, if you get me out of this, I won't ever do it again. And then he gets us out of it, but we don't stick to the promise we made in the prayer, and we go right back, and if we don't get into that same thing, we get into something else that the Lord has to get us out of. And so that's what uh, verse 1 helps us understand, that yes, we hear of all the wrong that Gomer has done, but we can, we some Gomers, amen. We uh, stand in that same uh, position when it comes to God and our faithfulness to uh, our salvation in Christianity, amen. Being uh, children and people of God. And so it goes on, verse two says, well, let me close that verse one, and it says, though they turn to other gods and love raisin cakes. Raisin cakes was like a uh, worship offering uh, that the Israelites were giving to idol gods. Asherah was the uh, idol god that they were wasting their time with. And think about all the stuff we waste our time with and put before the Lord. We 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 ought to be, when church is in, we ought to be at church, but we somewhere watching the car or running errands or uh, shopping and doing movies and uh, saying we just we worked all night. Well, if you got a job, God gave it to you. God blessed you. That means you, you're getting some uh, compensation. And so we ought to serve and thank and praise God for that, not penalize him and say, I can't come to church. I can't. Study. I can't attend. I'm going to have to quit the choir. I'm going to have to quit ushering. I'm going to have to stop all of that because work come first. Oh, oh, well, it won't come first for long because if you put anything before God, it's going to get torn down. Amen. And in the same uh, uh, aspect, you can never be better uh, when you leave God out of the equation. And so, in other words, we wonder why, man, I'm working more, I'm even making more, but I'm not able to, to hold up everything I need to hold up. You need to uh, uh, take a look. And the Bible says uh, 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 that we owe the Lord our first fruits. In other words, if we are working, God is blessing us. If we got any kind of income, then we are to tithe, we are to give off the top, and he'll make the rest go further. He'll make it go longer and make it go stronger. Amen. I oftentimes wondered. I grew up in a household of four children, uh, mother and father, thank God, and daddy worked. Mama was a homemaker, and 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 they never let us see or or it never seemed to us like we lacked for anything. And I discovered when I got to the point where I could understand that mom and daddy were tithers. And when you tithe, God makes a way. 
Amen. I wish I had some witnesses tonight. I believe I got some. And so the raisin cakes were indicative of them giving a worship offering to the false god Asherah, wasting their time giving uh, uh, worship offerings to an uh, idol god that couldn't do nothing for them, all the while forsaking the real god. In other words, have you ever uh, uh, had a friend, I know it wasn't you, it wasn't me, that, that cheated on uh, whoever they were with and come to find out the one they were cheating with couldn't hold a candle to the one they were supposed to be with. And so that's similar to this uh, example here that, listen, they giving raisin cakes, sacrificing spending time doing all of that with an idol that could not do anything forsaking God who has all power. And notice I said has. Ain't no had. Ain't no fasting. He's got the power. Amen. And so verse 2 says, so uh, uh, this is Hosea talking. He says, so I bought her for myself for 15 shekels of silver and a homer and a half of barley. Now look at that. So now check this out, y'all. That's like some of us that we got relatives and stuff, and we let them go so far, and it's not all our fault. But we do. The Bible does say, "Train." Proverbs says, "Train up a child in the way that they should go, and when they get old, they will not depart from it." Now that means that we've got to train them in the word, the word of God. We got to bring them up in church, bring them up in, in Christ. Amen. Uh, lead them, show them the way, the way of the Lord. And that when that is Im implemented and uh, really resonated and, and, and really uh, intertwined within them, that they may go astray. But it, and if they do go astray, it won't be because of you, it will be in spite of you. What do I mean by that? In spite of the fact that you took them to church and that you prayed over them, you taught them how to pray, and you let them hear the word, and you got them active in church, they they still went off, got with the wrong crowd in spite of you, but not because of you. But now on the other flip side of that, if we don't bring them up in the word and in the way of the Lord, they oftentimes will get caught up in stuff because of us. Why? Because we did not show them the way. When God blesses us with children, it's our responsibility. We are supposed to clear out other things and prioritize. God comes first. Amen. Husband, wife, children. Amen. Family. God and the family. Amen. Then the career. Amen. Because to keep the family going, you need that career. Amen. And so we have to be careful that we're not the reason uh, that certain things fester and go wrong because we didn't get our hands on it uh, in time. There was a story of, a, of a, a, a lady that called in on a talk show, radio show, and the man was a counselor uh, that dealt with problematic teenagers and stuff like that. And this mother calls in and she says, listen, my son is out uh, doing drugs. I don't, he's stealing. He's doing it all. I can't do anything with him. She says, he, uh, she asked the, 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 the counselor on the radio, she said, what shall I do? And the man says, shrink him down to about three years old and start all over again. In other words, it's, it was too late. We have to start young, train up a child in the way that they should go, and when they get old, they will not re depart from it. They'll come back to it. That's what the prodigal did. The prodigal found himself in a hog pen, and then the Bible says that when he came to himself, if he didn't have nothing in him, it wouldn't have been nothing to come back into. But his daddy, his family brought him up the right way, so he came to himself. We got to teach our children. Watch this. Sometimes we let them go off and do all this crazy stuff. The Holy Spirit is taking over this thing here. We let them do all this crazy stuff, all this worldly stuff. They want to look like some of these crazy looking folk on TV and everything and, 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 and all of that. 
I'm not going to talk specific, but you know some of these folks look crazy. And that's, they 20 now, but they're going to end up being 60 and still and looking crazier. But what we got to do is get their, we need to help them uh, understand not to idolize the world, the things of the world. We've got to idolize the things of God. Amen. And so we've got to uh, learn to get to the point. That's what I wanted to say, that. We, and a lot of times when they're going awkward like that, we sit up and talk about, well, they're trying to find themselves. Well, you better be careful because you can lose yourself trying to find yourself. I just said something there. You ought to write that down, talk, text, tweet that, that be careful not to lose yourself while trying to find yourself. So check this out. Let me finish this thing out. And so... I notice in verse 2, watch this, y'all. It says, so uh, Hosea says, I bought her for myself for, for 15 shekels of silver and a homer and a half of barley. Do you realize, and it says uh, in Exodus 21 and 32, uh, read that in your own time, Exodus 21, 32, it gives an example that if a slave, male or female, happened to get killed by an ox, or a bull, you know, out there in the farm fields or whatever. Uh, uh, if that slave got killed, they call it gored, uh, G-O-R-E-D. If they got gored or killed by one of those animals, then the owner of the animal would have to pay 30 shekels of silver for that deceased slave to the slave's master, and then they also had to kill that animal. Now watch this. Gomer was on was worth half in 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 possession in in money. She was worth half of a slave. And do y'all know that's a word right there? That's what sin does to us. Sin decreases. It depreciates us. Help me, Holy Ghost. It lessens us. And and what sin does, and I can't stand it, is it. It causes us to think that we are better, that it's better to sin. All the while, while we're sinning, we're just devaluing us, ourselves. We are wearing ourselves down. We are uh, lowering our value, amen, while sin is running rampant. And so now, look at that. Uh, Gomer, Hosea goes back and buys his wife. First of all, it's a mess to have to go buy your wife from another man. In other words, he's had her, and you're going to get her and got to give him money to get her back. But if you are hardly for pay, amen, for you. But I doubt they were paying her anymore. Isn't that a shame? I said it devalues you, but he paid, uh, Hosea paid, but he only had to pay half of what a dead slave would cost. My God, my God. We have to be careful not to let sin devalue us. And that's what it ha what happens if a young person gets on drugs, uh, that's sin. If they uh, get all into fornication, that's sin drinking and all of that and start skipping school. Ding! They don't graduate. Ding! They don't go to college. Ding! Devalue. So now they are out there with, with less options. When they finally do get straight, they, they lost value because they did not finish high school and did not go to college. And if you didn't go, you sure didn't finish it. And if you didn't finish high school or at least get your GED, then you're not going to make it into college. That's one of the requirements that you got to have a, a high school uh, degree or, or GED to go to college. And so look at that devaluing of that young person, especially as the world views you. Now, let me make sure you understand that, that God values all of us. We are precious in his sight. And that's why he loves us. That's why he wanted Hosea to understand the kind of love, the agape love, unending love that God has for us. 
But we're gonna find out. Y'all read this in your own time because I got happy and went a little, little, little longer than I wanted to. Uh, but I think I got across what we needed to get across uh, that, that it devalues us. And then watch this. But the key word is, as y'all finish reading verses one through five in this third chapter of Hosea, verse five has the key word return. It says afterward, the sons of Israel will return and seek the Lord, their God, and David, their king, and the Lord, uh, they will come trembling to the Lord and to his goodness in the last days. And so return, I did my research, uh, that word uh, is used some 22 times uh, in this uh, writing, the prophecies of Hosea. The, the word return is used 22 times. Amen. And so uh, that lets us know that if we want things to turn around, we've got to return to the Lord. I'm going to close with that. Where we sit right now in our nation, in our world, uh, it, it's calling for us to return to the Lord. And when we return, we have to repent and turn from uh our wrong, and then God will forgive us, and he will bless us. We're never going to get out of the situation we're in until we return to the Lord. Sure, you might get to go back to church and, and work and all that kind of stuff, and, and won't as many people get sick and everything, but if we want complete healing, we're going to have to uh, turn, return to the Lord, because he already paid for us, like uh, Hosea paid for his wife. Amen. Jesus paid it all on that cross called Calvary. Amen. On the hill called Crack Calvary. He hung, bled, and died, rose on the third day. He paid us, paid for us, paid in full, no debt on, old. But watch this. But we've got to return to him. Like Homer had to, re uh, Gomer had to return to Hosea. That's what we've got to do in your own life. Just start with you. If the world's going to ever get straight, it's got to start with you and I. Amen. We have to return. We got to return back to right way. Amen. So many of you, you hadn't been coming. You just fell on the wayside. You, whatever you want to call it, backslid, uh, uh, bedside, Baptist, whatever you did, uh, but it's time to return. This is a wake-up call. God wants us to return, be faithful to him, be faithful to his church. And certainly the right way church is where God has placed me and where God has placed you. And so many uh, have been blessed throughout this time of our social media and we thank God for you. We want you to Come and experience the Right Way Church in person when we open up. But until then, feel free to call, text, email. All the information is on the website. Give your life to Christ. Unite with the Right Way Church. I'd be honored to be your pastor. I love you. I thank God for you. And I want to be here for you and your family. Right Way, the church where God's way is the only way and where bread of heaven is always being served.